I was teaching at Swarthmore College. Uh, it was not a tenure track position. So after three years, um, I was on the market and I looked for those schools that had a balanced perspective on teaching and scholarship. And it was a short list and Ithaca College was at the top. The biggest thing for me was being able to be both broad and deep in terms of what we teach because then you have a holistic perspective on education. The collaborations are the most satisfying for me and especially in unconventional uses of computer science. And computer science is, has this luxurious position where you can provide a lot of high-level scholarship level service which is very different than asking people to learn how to use Excel for instance. We were uh, using computer science techniques to understand how students are understanding in an introductory history class. And so what made it meaningful was that this was an important thing in education, which is history. Uh, but then we were becoming much more deterministic in terms of how we understand understanding happens. So to be able to do that and to empower people outside of computation to be better at what they do through computation probably would be the overarching goal for my research. Uh, sometimes that actually the best help is doesn't come from the people who are who are there by function but the ones who you collaborate with and you learn tremendously from those. I think it's really just a matter of getting the desk out of the room. In other words, that separation between the instructor and the students that I think ultimately everyone is a student in that classroom. I think five or six papers that I wrote were co-authored by students. So just admitting that from the get-go and turning the whole thing into a learning experience for everyone is, is the thing that I'm trying to do. By, by and large, my, what I've loved the most is faculty development. I think that age and wisdom doesn't really correlate. So it's very dangerous, I think, for a faculty member to appear as though they're passing down some wisdom. Uh, so within those confines, to be able to work with uh, junior faculty members and to learn from them as much as I'm sharing with what I have uh, would be, has been my favorite uh, form of service and will remain to be my favorite form of service. I think basically teaching is this incredible profession where you're getting paid to learn. Uh, that's, that's a privilege enough. And then on top of it you get a recognition and it becomes humbling. Uh, but then after you go through those three, two stages of realization, the longer lasting one is to actually question everything that you've done and to in your mind justify should you be getting this. And maybe much more importantly to actually use that as a reason to spend even more time for everything that you have to do from then on and maintain, in your mind at least, that this, this was actually okay. We, we've had conversations before like this and we both believe that this excellence notion is actually almost misleading, that there is no terminal state. So everything we are doing can be done better. I would like to be able to, maybe the most overarching goal that I have is to make it, make the students own the learning process even more. In other words, you know, we have been shifting from teaching to learning, but it is not something that happens because we said so. Students must be convinced that learning, them own learning, is the, way, is the most optimal way of learning. And so I guess I would love to be able to make some progress on that. I think Ithaca College has um, been great in valuing scholarship of teaching and learning. The sincere belief that interdisciplinary ways to tackle real-world problems is the way to go. It's not lip service here. <laughs>